Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And this integral comes straight to you courtesy of my Calculus 2 class. We went over this problem when we were reviewing homework in class yesterday, and I thought it would be a good one to come and share here with everybody. So we have definite integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of cotangent to the fifth theta times cosecant cubed theta d theta. Pause the video if you want to try it on your own. Anytime I see a mix of powers of cotangents and cosecants being multiplied in my integral, I know I'm probably going to use u substitution, and you have two options. Either you're going to let u be cotangent theta, or you're going to let u be cosecant theta. And then from there, just kind of play out both scenarios, see which will work. Sometimes both will work, and that's great. But the next step is we have to know the derivative of each of these guys, and sometimes, you know, we're a little rusty on the cofunctions. People don't use them as often. So here's something to remember. If the prefix has co in it, so like cosine, cotangent, cosecant, the derivative is negative. It will have a minus sign. And then they just mirror the pattern for the derivative of tangent and secant. So derivative of cotangent theta is negative cosecant squared theta and I'll put a d theta because I'm calling all of that du. And then derivative of cosecant theta is negative cosecant theta cotangent theta d theta. Okay, so here's the deal. Say we were to pursue this first option of u sub. u is cotangent theta, so I'd have u to the fifth. du is cosecant squared. So what you would need to do is break up the cosecant cubed into cosecant squared theta times another cosecant theta d theta. And then hopefully at this point you could see you have problems, right? So cotangent to the fifth theta, that would be u to the fifth. Cosecant squared theta d theta, that would be negative du. And then you're stuck with this extra cosecant theta that we cannot write in terms of cotangent theta because it's not squared. It's not to an even power. So then you go, mm, that option will not work. Abort mission, okay? And then you say, well, obviously the other one has to work. Let's hope so. So in this case, if I let u be cosecant theta, for du, I need one power of cosecant and one power of cotangent. So let me pluck them off and get ready. Let's do some prep work before we jump in and make the use up. Okay, so here we go. So remember, we had integral pi over 4 to pi over 2. I'm going to pluck off a cosecant and a cotangent. So now I have cotangent to the fourth theta, and then cosecant squared theta, and then that cosecant theta, cotangent theta, d theta is waiting for me. Okay, perfect. If you want to just make it even easier, negative du, right, is equal to all of this cosecant theta, cotangent theta, d theta. Okay, so are we ready to make our u sub? Well, this cosecant squared theta, that's going to be u squared. Cosecant theta, cotangent theta, d theta, that's going to be negative du. But what do we do with this extra cotangent to the fourth theta? I have to write everything in terms of u, and u is cosecant theta. So now it's time to bust out one of your Pythagorean identities. And I showed my class this yesterday, so if you forget the identities that involve the other trig functions, you're just going to derive it yourself off to the side. You're going to go, I know sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. And if I need an identity that involves cotangent, cotangent is cosine theta over sine theta. So I'm going to divide everybody by sine squared theta. Okay. So you do just have to remember sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. And then now we have 1 plus, who's this? Very good. Cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And then when you've done this enough times, you can kind of just imagine this in your head. So how am I going to get rid of this cotangent to the fourth? Well, the good thing is that it's to an even power. So notice, this is what we can do. Cotangent to the fourth theta is cotangent squared theta squared and cotangent squared theta is cosecant squared theta minus one and then all of that is squared so if i were to put it in my integral remember u is cosecant theta so this would become u squared minus one squared 
cotangent to the fourth theta becomes u squared minus one quantity squared. Do we got that? Take a minute. That's probably the spiciest part of the problem. Okay, we're not quite ready to make the full substitution because we have to change our limits of integration. So these limits here, pi over four and pi over two belong to the variable of the integral, which is theta. I need to change them so that they're in terms of u. So we could just do that really quickly. U of pi over four is gonna be cosecant of pi over four. Cosecant of pi over four is reciprocal of sine of pi over four. I know a lot of you were taught to memorize it as rad two over two. It's almost better if you think of it before it's rationalized as one over rad two, because then when you need cosecant, you just take the reciprocal and it's rad two and you're just done. Okay, u of pi over two is cosecant of pi over two, which is reciprocal of sine of pi over two, which is one. Okay, great. So now we're ready. Let's rewrite our whole integral in terms of u. So we have, let the people know, we're putting it together. One to rad two, these are my new limits. Oh no, I did, I skipped a step. I got too excited. Rad two to one, give me a minute. Rad two to one, we have u squared minus one squared, u squared, and then this negative du, I'm gonna put the negative outside and then we have du, are we okay? All right, good. Now, now I'm gonna flip my limits of integration and that adds an extra minus sign to the whole integral. So then that'll make this positive now. So we have one to rad two, u squared minus one squared times u squared du. Are we okay? All right, good. Now it's just a matter of multiplying everything out and taking the antiderivative, but it should be smooth sailing from here. So one to rad two, this will be u to the fourth minus two u squared plus one times u squared du, and then distribute that throughout. So one to rad two, u to the sixth minus two u to the fourth plus u squared du. Good, good. Now go take the antiderivative term by term. So 1 7th u to the 7th minus 2 fifths u to the 5th plus 1 3rd u cubed evaluated from 1 to rad 2. Okay, here we go. So we've got 1 7th rad 2 to the 7th. I just think of it, it's going to be rad 2 to the 6th times another rad 2. So if I square rad two, I get two. And then I'm gonna have basically three of those. So that's eight rad two. Got it? Okay, good. Minus two fifths, again, rad two to the fourth is gonna be four. And then I have another rad two left over. Plus one third, rad two times rad two times rad two is two rad two, that's the upper limit minus one seventh minus two fifths. Thank goodness that limits just one plus one third. Okay, so let's clean up a wee bit more. This is eight rad two over seven minus eight rad two over five plus two rad two over three minus one seventh plus two fifths minus a third. And then, ooh, we need to get a common denominator. The common denominator is 105. Okay, so the first term I need to multiply top and bottom by five and three. So 15, this one by 21, this one by 35, and then same thing, 15, 21, 35. Good. Okay, so 8 rad 2 times 15. You only multiply the 8 and the 15 by each other. So I just do in my head, 8 times 10 is 80, plus 8 times 5, that's 40. So 80 plus 40, 120 rad 2, minus, I'm just going to do all the numerators, 168 rad 2, plus 70 rad 2, minus 15 plus 42 minus 35 and then my denominator is 105 
And then, who we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So let's see, 120 rad 2 plus 70 rad 2 is 190 rad 2 minus 168 rad 2, that's 22 rad 2. And then for the constants, negative 15 minus 35, negative 50 plus 42, negative 8 over 105. There's our answer. Not the prettiest answer we've ever gotten, but you know what? It's correct. So we love it just as much as the rest. Did you get it? Or did you make a silly mistake along the way? There's plenty of places to make a silly mistake. So if you find that that's you, I actually have a video on that. I will link it here at the end of this. How to stop making careless or stupid mistakes. Watch it. I give good advice. Anyways, if you did things differently, let me know. I suppose you could have just written things in terms of sines and cosines. But you know what? I wanted to be a purist and practice using some of the identities and derivatives and whatnot that involve cotangents and cosecants because we don't work with them as often, you know? It's good. It's good to be a well-rounded mathematician. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video with a friend. You never know who might enjoy it. You never know who might be a secret calculus aficionado and be like, wow, this was a great video. And don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Thanks, guys. Bye.